moment. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Give me a sec. We're live. Atma Namaste. Let's start off with our short prayer. Inhale and exhale. Feel yourself in the presence of the teacher. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sri to Lord Maha Guruji Meli. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels, to our soul and divine self. We thank you for your great, great blessings. To all the angels of communication, of our respect to Wi-Fi, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, we ask for your blessings. For greater knowledge, greater understanding, greater wisdom, to all the beings of knowledge, light and power, help us to have a greater and clearer understanding of these priceless teachings, to absorb and assimilate this and use it to become better divine instruments in your service. With thanks, <coughs> so be it. Inhale and exhale. You may slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste, everybody. Atma Namaste, guys. It would be nice if there are some faces to the, to the images. It's nice to look at a few faces at least. So we're going to move to the next chapter. Yeah, so just give me a moment. So I can just mute everyone. So there's no issues later. So you're supposed to start today. Why? Because you said that last time. No. I said yeah, you, you said you will start. No, you said you wanted to do it. So I <laughs> All right. Um, so let's move on to the next chapter. So if you look at the next chapter, it's, it's actually the navel chakra. Yes. And so uh, keeping the navel chakra in mind, uh, if you look at what's written there, it's quite interesting because they say uh, the second center at the navel or solar plexus. Um, I'm not too sure whether they're confused or, or they're just trying to, you know, make it interesting for us saying it's somewhere there. Um, however, for me, the key, uh, key comes where they say it radiates out in, in 10 directions. And for us, uh, the navel is eight uh, petals and it's the solar plexus that's actually uh, 12 petals. And so for me, at this point, the Manipura, as they call it in Sanskrit, is with reference to the solar plexus chakra. And we'll come to a few more things about it at this point. And so they say the color, interestingly here, is, uh, is a blend of the shades of red. And it also has a certain amount of green within this particular um, within this particular chakra. And the green comes from, if you remember earlier, from the spleen chakra. So the reason why we wanted to do the spleen chakra according to the author is that the energy that comes out of the spleen, when we know where it's going to, like the basic chakra or it's going towards the navel chakra, it becomes easier to understand once you understood that uh, for the first chakra, which they call the spleen chakra, and then the movement of energy. Now connecting it to all these chakras becomes easier. So again, the green comes from the spleen chakra. And then they say uh, it moves and it radiates in all parts of your abdominal area. So the green is all there. Now, interestingly, in Master Chah's book, he says every time you need to release, eliminate, then uh, the chakra sometimes produces, the navel chakra produces orange to help elimination. So more or less, if you look at the solar plexus, uh, the way Master Chow talks about it is not just red and green. Yes, there are other colors as well. And we'll come to that in a bit. Or most probably Amit will mention that. What? And so uh, if you look at uh, the area that they talk about, abdominal area, but they men mention specifically, specifically uh, the liver, intestines, uh, digestive, but here they've also mentioned the uh, kidneys. For us, the kidneys come with the Ming Ming Chakra, but remember they're not revealing the Ming Ming Chakra at this point. Or the solar. Yes, or the solar plexus. And so they're giving you, first of all, somewhere there, so they, they're kind of adding navel, solar, and the main, main all, all put together, and they're telling us what's happening. But we know more clearly because of Master Chur that it's more specific, right? And so the solar plexus, yes, digestive, but more the, uh, with reference to the large intestines, only part of it and part of the small intestine, not all of it. The kidneys, yes. Uh, sorry, the liver, yes, but the kidneys come under the main, main chakra, and the larger portion of the intestines, both small and large, come under the navel chakra. So just to make that clarity uh, visible here. Now moving on to the image that we have. You have the image? No, okay. So uh, the image that we have is this. So you can see the green, 
Yeah, the green comes. Ignore my. Oh, it's it's uh, <laughs> mirror image. All right. So if you look at it, you can see. You know, there's that portion where it shows the green is coming from this plane, and uh, the 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 twelve spokes. That's basically what I want to show you. However, uh, to move on with that uh, particular part, it says that this is the center. No, no oh, congratulations, Sonia. I hope you're going to be able to use the book now. Uh, so moving on, uh, so to chapter six, uh, the second paragraph. So basically they say that this chakra uh, corresponds to various kinds of emotions. Oh, you want to talk about that? I thought I'll just finish this paragraph and give you the whole thing. The whole chapter? Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, basically it's, it's with reference to a lot of emotions, they say. And that we know is not connected to the navel. So it's obviously the solar plexus chakra we're referring to. Uh, now, it also talks about the astral correspondence and says, awakens, um, when awakened, gives power of feeling a sensitive, sen sensitiveness, oops, sorry, sensitiveness to all sorts of influences though without as yet anything like the definite comprehension that comes from the faculty corresponding to seeing and hearing. Yes. Uh, so for me, uh, okay, let me just finish even the next line. When therefore the etheric center becomes active, man begins in the physical body to be conscious of feelings of whether it is um, with reference to hostility or friend, friendliness from a different person or comes from a place. Yes. So you find that the place is uh, calming or it's very stressful or in this case it says uh, is pleasant or unpleasant, but without the least knowing why. So the development of the solar plexus, as Master Cho tells us, is very crucial uh, to us. It's called the eye center, which means that uh, it does look at what this uh, incarnated soul, the Jivatma requires. However, in the solar plexus, yes, there are emotions, but there are what you call positive and negative emotions. So we have to remember that there are not just emotions that are evoked, that, are, that there are positive and negative emotions. And when these emotions are, uh, are awakened, the feeling of fear is not like with your eyes, you can see only with this portion of the entire body. Sometimes a fear you feel in the whole body. Right. Uh, when you feel happiness, uh, it's not just your your smile that shows that you're smiling. Right. Or um, the words of love that you hear. It, it's something that you feel and sense in most parts of your body. Right. And people, when you are, for example, in love, they say you look younger, you look happier, your skin glows, uh, your digestive system is better. Every part of you starts functioning better because of the emotion that you are feeling. Now, when you feel sad, it's also uh, responding practically in the whole body. In psychology, we talk about how these emotions cause certain facial expressions. Yes. But in psychology, we also talk about if that emotion continues to persist in the body for a very long, long period of time, certain organs get affected with reference to sadness, including the physical heart. So the, the emotion that we are talking about actually affects the whole body. And for me, it's interesting because the solar plexus is literally right in the center of the physical body. And so emotions, energies, everything passes through that. So if, uh, if you are feeling angry, every energy that goes through that is contaminated with that energy. If it is love, it is energized with that energy. And so it goes all over the body, affecting the entire being. Yes. Uh, so I think that's some of what I wanted to say. If there's anything that comes in between, I will let you know. Go ahead. Okay. Hmm. So it says the second uh, center at the navel or solar plexus receives a primary force. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We already know about the force already. Uh, ten undulations of petals, right? That's where we're, we're a little different. Uh, Master Cho talks about eight, eight, eight striations. Uh, and that's what Sumi's talking about. So I won't refer to the solar plexus here. I'm just going to refer to the navel, okay? Uh, to add on what she mentioned. Now, its predominant color is uh, a curious blending of various shades of red and is also a great deal of green in it, okay? So that is where we're a little bit different from uh, Master's teachings where um, 
okay. where the chakra is located on the navel, all right, and it has eight petals and it has predominantly yellow, green, uh, blue, red, and violet prana. So there's a lot of pranas in there. It's not just uh, it's not just um, one color. Red and right? green. Red and green, right? That's what it's saying. Okay. Um, so it receives a green ray from the spleen and that ray is also flooding the abdominal and vivifying the liver. So when it says vivifying the liver, it's talking about obviously solar plexus because the navel, as far as I know, it's not really connected. It is because the navel, the navel you can access different parts of the body. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it's mostly the solar plexus they're probably talking about. And the kidneys is probably the Ming Wen chakra through the belt meridian from the navel to the uh, kidneys. Okay, um, now let me just see what else does it say. All right, so if you look at the colors, although Master says there's no orange, okay, we'll look at, we'll just finish this and we'll go back. Um, and the digestive apparatus generally, centering especially in the solar plexus. Okay, so let me share the screen again. Now, although the navel is not able to, um, does not have orange in it, it's able to produce orange, just like Sumi was talking about, all right? Um, when is required, okay? And uh, the question is, why does he say that it looks various shades of red, all right? And there's a great deal of green. Okay, green could be depending on what was happening when the person was looking at it. Uh, it changes color depending on the, you know, what is the, what is predominantly happening in the navel. Um, but in general, um, I thought the book says it has orange. Did you say that? No, Masachua says that in the navel. And I think green is because it breaks down. So everything yeah, that, that comes green, into the so. system. So, so obviously so. the body, the navel needs green, which it probably takes from the, from the so, uh, spleen and also from, from the air on its own when it wants to digest or when, when it wants to break down and assimilate. Um, and of course it needs yellow for assimilation as well. Okay. So because when you look at yellow, yellow is actually assimilation for those of you who've done advanced panic healing. Okay. Eating food is not good enough. Digesting is not good enough. You need to assimilate the food for that. The body needs uh, yellow, but actually what's very interesting is if you look at the picture from the advanced book, it looks orange. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I was uh, looking at. There is green there, but for me, it looked orange. Uh, uh, various shades of red, actually. So uh, yeah. it, it's quite accurate. Now, why, uh, why does Master say that? I have no idea. Uh, I can take a guess. Uh, the guess would be uh, if you mix red lip prana and yellow prana, you get orange prana. <laughs> Now, you have to keep in mind that this chakra is rotating. This is the chakra in motion. This chakra rotating very fast. So when it's rotating very fast, the color is not just going to stand there and look around. It's going to, it, it, there are a lot of, um, it's dynamic uh, activity happening. So this interaction of colors might produce a lot of orange, depending on, of course, when they also saw him, uh, what they're doing. Uh, but if you actually you look at the slowed down version of the chakra, then you see the actual colors of the chakra. So there is one where it's talking about um, chakra in motion and one when it's slow. So obviously the slow one is, um, is uh, the actual one. But if you look at it just on its own, it most likely looks like that because who's going to slow down the chakra that much? Okay. So one of the things they forgot to mention that's very important in this chapter is about the synthetic key. Um, the navel chakra produces a lot of synthetic key. Uh, all right. It's, it's really important. Uh, I can't talk more about it because it's part of our Hatha yoga, but you guys can read it and figure it out. Now the key and synthetic uh, key energy is uh, it's quite different from prana or life energy. All right. And it affects one's ability to draw in prana from the environment and also distribute that prana. So here you're looking at another uh, factor of assimilation. So the navel is in charge in pranic healing, we learn of digestion. But here you're looking at, it also has this thing called synthetic key, where it stores in its, in Chinese, they call it ki hai, um, or, you know, um, it's like a warehouse of energy. And the more of ki you have, 
the easier it is for your body to absorb prana and distribute prana. So it's very, very closely interacting with the spleen chakra. So that's why the navel has to do with general vitality and strength. Okay, that's why many of the martial artists, they meditate on their navel for two reasons. Number one is the strength and we'll talk about it. Um, and there are other reasons as well. Now, a person can be energized just by concentrating on the navel chakra. By concentrating on the navel chakra, it becomes energized and activated. Now, question is why? Number one, just like I said, it's very closely connected to the uh, spleen chakra. Okay, so when it's connected to spleen, when you concentrate on your navel, and many martial artists meditate on their navel, the body becomes very energized and body becomes very strong. Okay, the first reason is because it's connected to the navel, uh, spleen. The second reason is, that's why I think in one of the protocols it mentions if the person is hyper, has hypertension, be careful while energizing this navel, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's there. It's there. Um, and then uh, the second reason is it's connected to the Ming Ming, through the belt meridian. So when you energize the, the navel, the energy automatically travels around the belt meridian, which is like, like, you know, sort of like a belt, just from your belly button all the way to the back where the Ming Ming Chakra is located. And it slowly energizes that in a very safe manner. And then uh, this improves the distribution of energy around the body. So you notice there are some gaps because this is an open session, so you have to figure it out. And the third reason is, of course, because the Ming Ming, the navel is actually the manager of the uh, lower chakras. Uh, it's in charge of the physical body. It's like, you know, just like how you have managers, who are in charge of workers, the sex chakra is in charge of procreation, the basin chakra is in charge of the muscle bone tissue, but to manage them, you have the navel. So that's why if you look at many people who are weak, tired, uh, even arthritic patients, especially musculoskeletal system, um, heart ailments, um, anything to do with the physical body becoming really tired, drained, if you scan the navel, almost in my experience, about 80, 90% of the time, it really needs a lot of work. So if the healer just jumps in, does the basic, does the sex, does the throat, different parts, does not do the navel, then it becomes a problem. The other reason is the navel is also very good in uh, assimilation of prana. It's, it's very good in assimilation of prana. I'm not talking about assimilation of food. You have assimilation of food and you have assimilation of prana. Uh, so what I do is if a patient is, say, a little old and weak, not necessarily old, but very weak and tired. You have to understand when your body is sick, you can't eat properly, right? You can't eat normally. You have to have easily digestible food. Um, now, uh, how if you're not an experienced healer, you want easily digestible prana, or you want the prana to be more easily digested, um, then I would normally start with the navel chakra healing. Why? Because it will uh, it will it will enhance the body's ability to assimilate any other prana you project in all the other chakras. So supposing a person has arthritis, they're very old, they're very weak, tired. You start with the basic, you start with the throat, you start with the solar plexus, you start with the back heart, then you go here, 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 and then maybe you do the navel towards the end. But all the prana you projected, is the body able to take in that prana? But if you did the navel first, when you energize, it would be able to take in more, all right? When you clean, it will be able to handle it more, and when you energize, it'll be able to take in more than if you, you're taking more if you had done in the beginning than if you had done at the end. That's okay, no? Yes. Yeah. Too many things happening in my head. Okay, so that is about the um, navel chakra, and then we go into the uh, psychological aspect. Let me find it. This center is closely associated with feelings and emotions of various kinds. That is the key sentence of this uh, paragraph, by the way. So you have to meditate on that one, <laughs> okay? Uh, what are the various kinds of feelings, all right? And how does digestion got to do with your feeling, okay? Uh, the corresponding, I, I'll explain by the way, some of it, most of it. The corresponding astral center when awakened gives the power of feeling, okay? Uh, sensitiveness to all sorts of influences, though without as yet anything like the definite comprehension that comes from the faculties corresponding to seeing or hearing. So that means you get an awareness, not as clear as seeing or listening, but you're getting, what is it called? Uh, a feeling um, not as definite uh, comprehension. So it's like, I look at this pencil, I know there's a pencil because I can see it, right? But when you're using your navel, you can't see the pencil, but you know, for example, what to do 
So this is called the gut feeling that people talk about. Okay, this is to do with uh, instinct of knowing. I think Master Joe says. Okay, that is the astral or the psychotherapy version of the uh, navel chakra. Now, martial artists study uh, and work on the navel for two reasons. Number one is to make the body very strong because of the reasons we said before. And number two is to enhance their ability to, to instinctively know. So if I throw the pen like this, I catch it. I'm not looking at the pencil and saying, oh, you know what? This is going at this direction. It's falling at this rate per second. I'm going to move my fingertips and close it. No, I just instinctively grab it. Okay, so that is to do with feeling and instinct. So that's why it's not only physical, it's emotional and it's mental. So that's why they say of various kinds. Okay, it's physical, it's emotional and it's mental. So if you're physically fighting, you sort of know what attack is coming in before it happens. They meditate in the navel and they look in the person's eyes and they just, and they instinctively move. Okay, it is to do with, um, with the navel chakra. Now emotionally and mentally, many businessmen, they have this thing called gut feeling. Okay, now if you look at it, it makes no sense. What are you thinking from your intestines, from your stomach? No, but they know what to do. They know that, you know, this is something I have to do. It's a feeling, it's a gut feeling. So this is what um, the author is, in my perspective, probably talking about in addition to the solar plexus, because that cannot be revealed. Um, when therefore the good, uh, when the etheric center becomes active, okay, um, what is this good thoughts? All right, good thoughts, good words, good feelings, good will manifest as the good action. Okay, uh, now in the Lord's Prayer, if you study the Lord's Prayer, the good, good thoughts is the Agnya and the throat. So if a person has good thoughts, if you know the Lord's Prayer and you've done it, good thoughts. Good if a person has good, uh, sorry, good thoughts. If a person has good words, that's the, that's the throat. throat. If a person has good feelings, that's the heart. Okay, and if a person has good will, okay that's the solar okay then all of this will manifest as good action which is the navel which is the will to do good which is the will to do good and if all of them have this 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 and this in this format you have heaven on earth so that's what is meant by one of the meanings of having heaven on earth everyone having all of this good thoughts good words good feelings good will okay so um that is the point of heaven on earth. Now, why am I talking about this? It's a mixture of various feelings manifesting in the navel chakra. Okay. There's a lot to say here, but this guy's not saying anything, so I'm going to say it. So, if, so when therefore, okay, I think this is done. Anyway, right. So when therefore the etheric center becomes, um, by the way, the keyword also, I told you, various kinds, the corresponding astral center. When you use the word corresponding, that's a hint that what you do to one corresponds to another. Don't forget the principle of or the law of correspondence. There is a law of correspondence between the physical body and the energy body. And now there is another correspondence between the astral center and the etheric center. And the etheric center. So, which is why master makes it so easy when you do psychotherapy, because what does one next and another? So why should we talk about anything else? Just do it, make it easy. One day class. Okay. <laughs> now you have to understand that you have to remove the unnecessary part. It might sound very fancy, but will the students really understand uh, at the end of the day? Oh, by the way, you have one chakra and independently you have another one and independently you have another one and you have to do this one, this one. So no, no, just do this one, this one, this one. Each chakra has multiple functions. That's true. And also not true. Okay. So, uh, Keep in mind the corresponding part. This is, that's why you have to study properly because these words you have to really meditate on sometimes or you have to think about it as long as they're good authors. Um, now when the, okay, we have to finish this chapter so we can start the next. So when therefore the etheric center becomes active or rotates quickly and more functional, the man begins in the physical body to be conscious of astral influences, vaguely feeling friendliness and hostility. That is also the gut feeling. You know, when you meet someone, you're like, ah, I don't think this guy likes me. You know, you get this feeling, right? It's what Master Chua calls lower sensitivity. The heart is higher sensitivity. And it's good we're doing the navel and the heart today because <laughs> they're both, this is the higher sensitivity, this is lower sensitivity, okay? Um, there's more, but we'll keep quiet for now. You know, when he was talking about uh, <laughs> good thoughts, good words, good feeling, good will, and the will to do good, I think the COVID-19 has uh, made most people 
look at that, right? Because you realize you, you have to be positive regardless of how bad this virus is. Uh, so your thoughts, whether it's towards your family, towards other people, uh, and you realize because you're stuck with a family, you have to try and manifest words uh, that are actually nurturing and loving. I mean, there might be certain things that come out of the solar plexus, but in the end, you have to mend it with the heart, with good feelings. And even if you do want to do something, it is to help the other person become better. So the, uh, the ability to use the energy from our solar plexus is more to try and see that we have uh, helped the other person become better, overcoming their weaknesses. And the act uh, to help people, not just you know, within the four walls of the house, but, but to see to it that we've actually gone out there and helped someone else. And it's not just because we are pranic healers or hatha yogis. I, I think a huge number of people have gone out there and opened out their hearts and decided to do something to actually help someone. Just not thinking, but actually acting on it. Go ahead. So, so many martial artists see what they're talking about vaguely feeling uh, hostility, pleasant, unpleasant feeling without knowing why. That is how martial artists act. They just know how your energy is. They know how it's going to attack. They want to know all, all these aspects. And for them, the navel is very important. They, they really uh, meditate and they put a lot of emphasis on the on the navel chakra. The stronger the navel, the stronger they can sense when an attack is coming. You know, in those Chinese movies, when they're just sitting there, then the arrow comes, they just move out of the way like that. That is two things. That's auric awareness that develops with Kundalini, but, but more it's also the navel, navel chakra. Okay. Um, now, most people, if you look at the instinct, most people, when you, uh, just to connect the solar plexus, the navel and the heart, when you bug them, because this good thoughts, good thoughts, good feeling, that's the target. But most people, when you actually tell them something bad, or when you, um, when you shout at them, or when you push them, the instinct, all right, the instinct, the reflex action that you have, which comes from the navel, by the way. So if you scan a kid, their navel chakra, their basic is developing, but their navel is not developing. So the, the instinct, the reflex is not developing. So if you tell them to catch a ball, to catch a ball requires some amount of reflex. They can't do it uh, until a certain age or they just roll off the bed. They don't uh, realize that there's no, you know, feeling of, oh, there's, there's, you know, depth here. But here, even if you're close, your navel will start to activate if you see someone and then you, you know, it, it connects to the basic. So most people, the navel and the basic are also very closely related. Uh, it's closely related to all three, all the lower chakras, but uh, their instinct in most people, if you push them or you get angry with them, the instinct is to fight back, okay? You push me, I'll fight with you again. So that's the instinct. But what we want is them for, for them to transmute that into the instinct to love or the in instinct to understand or the instinct to have patience or the instinct. So when you are angry at a person, you sense hostility. Your instinct is not to push them back. Your instinct is to understand them and show compassion or run away. Okay. All right. So that ends this chapter. Uh, Nivo. Yep. Yeah. So hard. All right, so we move on, <clears throat> on to chapter number seven, the heart center or the anatha center. Now, this one has 12 spokes, as uh, we also know in prana healing, it's exactly the same. And they call it uh, like a glowing golden sun, yes? And so they say that this is the color of this particular chakra. It receives yellow, again, from the spleen chakra. So like I said, the reason why they've placed the spleen chakra as the first one we're going to be uh, talking about is because of the connection to the other chakras. So the yellow, remember, comes from there and into uh, the heart center. And this uh, particular energy that continues to stay in the heart, as it continues to stay in the heart, it not only helps the heart, the chakra itself, but it starts to also influence the blood. Because remember, the circulatory system is connected with the physical heart, and that is controlled by the heart chakra. And so this uh, yellow, uh, according to them, is then circulated through the entire body. Now, it also says that it passes through um, the brain uh, and permeates it, and then through that, uh, and through directing itself principally to the 12 petaled flower in the middle of the, the seventh or the highest center. And so they say it goes into the brain and then into the, the seventh chakra for them is the crown chakra. And the crown chakra, they're talking about interestingly here, the 12 inner petals. And so they mention here, um, I think it's in this paragraph or later, uh, the 12 petal flower in the middle of the seventh or the highest chakra. So the, uh, the Sahasra chakra 
basically has, according to the word Sahasra, it's supposed to be a thousand, but it's actually only 972. So it has the 12 petals as mentioned here, and we do refer to them as the golden petals. And so the yellow continues to feed into those petals and it has uh, 960 colorful petals around. And so making it the closest to a thousand, 972. And so the name Sahasra Chakra. Yes, and so they continue to mention that uh, in the brain, it uh, confers the power of high philosophical and metaphysical thoughts. And so we're basically referring to spiritual thoughts, your alignment towards uh, a spiritual path. And so with that, you start opening up your crown. Now it could be through meditation, it could be with, through study as well. So if you scan, for those of you who are, are pranic healers, before we started to do the session, if you could just scan your crown and then scan your crown right now, as we continue to talk about this, you'll notice the crown is automatically starting to become bigger. So when you start to talk about God, the universe, when you talk uh, about the spiritual books and uh, very uh, um, esoteric books, uh, same thing happens to the crown chakra. It actually enjoys this kind of uh, conversation. And I remember when Master Cho would be in the room and we would talk about it and he says, do you notice that your crown is actually kind of opening up? And you can almost feel it and it sometimes gets heavy as well, not just opening up. Okay. Um, do you want to continue? You can finish and then I'll finish. Okay. How much you want to talk? Where you I just did only one paragraph. Okay. All right, uh, having dealt with the third, that spleen, we pass to the fourth, that's the heart. Uh, the chakram has 12 spokes or radiation and it's glowing golden color. You know, many of these authors are very polite. Uh, in most people, it's not really gold. It's actually light whitish yellow. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, the one that you see in the advanced book is not how the heart chakra of most people actually look. The ordinary person. Ordinary people is more, you know, Yellow. That's why the yellow ray is coming. I don't know. Anyway, uh, now it receives yellow ray from the spleen center when the current is full and strong. You finish that? It produces strength and regularity in the heart action. Okay. Uh, strength when the okay. Let's finish the first uh, sentence. Um, the heart is not only connected through the. I don't think it's only connected to the spleen. All right. Uh, the heart is connected to and from many many uh, very very important chakras. All right, number one. Yes, the heart might need yellow, definitely for healthy uh, heart tissue, it needs yellow from the spleen, okay? For the muscle. For the muscle. But also, from the basic, there is a connection. You have to understand that they're talking about one heart. There are actually two, two hearts, <laughs> okay? Uh, it's about four acupuncture points, okay, I think. I think it's four. So, um, so um, you're looking at the front heart and the back heart very closely linked okay so they're looking at only one heart now the back heart uh, requires tremendous amount of um, uh, prana from the basic it requires red prana okay uh, which the basic will supply it okay that's why i think there's quite a bit of red there's there's red in the back heart okay because it needs that red to be you know dynamic to to give uh, movement to the lungs to allow the lungs to function to allow the heart function circulation circulation of prana all that you need red right those of you done advanced prana healing you know what i'm talking about uh those of you are not sorry uh, it'll sound confusing okay um so that is from the so you have from the spleen to the heart and then you have from the basic i think most likely to the back heart there is definitely definitely there is um because we know that when the solar plexus is not okay that that meridian gets clogged and the heart also gets affected so there's, uh, there's over there uh, a channel. And also there is from the front solar to the front heart, uh, not one, but I think several very important channels connecting the front and the, the heart, okay? Um, because that one, the solar plexus is the clearing house. So it helps the energy go to the upper chakras. All right. And that's why, unfortunately, if you're very stressed, especially if you're the expressive type, uh, you know, you get angry very often, uh, you verbally abuse people very often, that is front. Remember we were talking about, did I say it in this session? I did, right? If you're the expressive type, it's the front. Yeah. So generally those kind of people will start to have uh, heart, heart problems uh, because of the meridian from the front to the front heart. But those people who keep it in, uh, they keep it in um, and it goes to the back, back heart, not, not because they might not be expressive because, you know, 
for various reasons. Then it usually manifests as lower back pain or manifests as hypertension or manifests, um, which also leads to heart problem. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, so basically there are several channels. Okay. Um, Okay, then you're gonna go into the 12 petal, right? So I'll just finish this. The heart is very important. Uh, they, they've just left one page, but I have to talk about it, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it because I have, we have a little bit more time. Uh, number one, it, it, it's very important because the heart controls the blood vessels with the basic. It controls all the blood vessels in your body. Number two, um, it's very important uh, in terms of, um, okay, we're still talking about the astral. So it's very important for immunity. Very important for immunity. Why? Number one, it is one of the major sources of air prana in your system. It not only comes from the spleen, uh, see, the, you have major, two major sources of um, inlets for air prana into your body. One is the spleen, one is the back heart, uh, through the lungs. Okay, so it's one of the major sources of energy or prana in the body. Number two, it controls and energizes the thymus gland, which is very important for for the immune system. Number three, um, it's in charge of white blood cells or blood production in the ribs, scapula, and breastbone. And if I remember correctly, I might be wrong, I'm not a doctor, but I think in adults, a lot of the blood is, not all of it, but a lot of the blood is produced in these areas. The breastbone, the scapula, um, all right, these areas, um, and the ribs. All right. And of course, along with the throat chakra, it also controls and energizes the lymphatic system. Not only the throat chakra is in charge of the lymphatic system, the heart and the throat are in charge of the lymphatic system. Okay, so, uh, so it's also significantly controlled by the heart chakra. So you have prana, you have thymus, you have white blood cells, you have lymphatic system. <laughs> so it's okay. very, no, that's later I'm going to talk about. So that, that is immunity that is immunity it's very very important for your immune system now uh it's also in charge of circulatory system that's what sumi says but i'll i'll come back to that uh, when i show you the powerpoint okay you can go on oh you don't want to talk about it now what all right all right so the next uh, part so we're looking at the physiological uh, aspect and now we're going to go into the psychological aspect that master also talks about in pranic psychotherapy so just like we referred earlier that uh, the solar plexus has not just an etheric center, but there is a corresponding astral center. Again, with reference to the heart, they mention again, yes, we have the etheric uh, heart center, but you also have the corresponding astral center. Now, when awakened, now when we're talking about when awakened is as we develop, right? And we start to manifest more and more of these qualities that come through the astral into the solar plexus or the heart. Remember, these are the two centers that are connected to the astral body. Yes, and so uh, coming back to this. Now, when that awaken endows a man with the power to comprehend and sympathize with, and so instantly understand the feelings of other astral entities. And so when you are able to awaken this center, when you are able to awaken the heart center more than the solar plexus, right? Which means uh, that the sol solar plexus is not inhibited or shrunk, uh, but the solar plexus, if you look at it as a chakra, it is also developed, but the heart is more developed. So if this is the size of the solar plexus, it's slightly smaller than the heart. And so, which means that the heart, uh, the higher emotions are able to then take control of the lower emotions. That's basically it. And so the heart center, keeping it big and activated is very important. But during the course of, uh, a day and the way human nature is, sometimes it's difficult to stay in the heart area all the time, loving and sympathetic and compassionate to other people and understanding and sensitive. So there are times that we all go into the solar plexus. And so we start to get irritable. We start to get angry. Uh, we feel jealousy. We feel all kinds of different emotions. But at the same time, we can also feel strong, lower positive emotions like strength and perseverance, assertiveness. These are these are areas where you're using the solar plexus energy, but in a positive light or in a positive direction to take you further with the accompaniment of the heart. 
So when you're trying to be assertive, it's not where you are going to cause harm to others, right? Uh, so for example, you want to compete, uh, maybe it's in a, in a swimming championship. Now, when you compete, you're not going there to do harm to others, but you're going to use all that you have to try and get to the point as quickly as possible, right? Not kicking off your competitors, but, but to get there. Now, when you have love and compassion uh, to, towards other people, if there is someone who gets hurt, despite you coming first, you might still be loving and kind to the other person, right? But if you are only solar plexus, there's all pride, then you don't care about anybody. You're like, I'm the best. Uh, so there's a difference when these centers get activated. So the point is to try and maintain our, our uh, emotional state more in the, in the heart chakra and the solar chakra both but balanced. So Master Cho says, it's not that your solar plexus is bad. It's just that we have to overcome the negative emotions in the solar plexus and continue to keep the strong positive uh, energies in the solar plexus strong for us. And at the same time, also try to see if we can also develop love and compassion and understanding. Now, in the old days, uh, to sympathize was a good word, but in psychology, the better word is to empathize. So you literally get into the shoes of the other person to feel the pain. Uh, so say, for example, uh, there is a friend of yours and she has or he has lost a loved one. If you have already experienced it, you already experienced losing a dear one, then you will definitely understand what they're going through. And for you to be able to do that, that comes from the heart. The ability to, to be sensitive to another person, to be able to empathize with the other person, with the situation that they're going through, comes through your heart. It doesn't come through the solar plexus because the heart is other-oriented, whereas the solar plexus is eye-oriented. Now, the eye is good. Remember, Master Cho talks about self-interest. Self-interest, not selfishness. <laughs> selfishness is when you go to the other side of the solar plexus, but self-interest is where you take care of yourself. Remember, you and I, we always hope that there'll be someone else who would be there to take care of us and do everything for us. We might be lucky to have that, but there is going to be a time when we have to take care of ourselves. When it comes to your spiritual practice, no one else can help you but yourself. If you want to overcome your limitations and weaknesses, there's only you. And for that, you need that solar plexus energy to say, you know what? I want to improve. I do not want to be so irritable. I do not want to be so jealous. I want to overcome this limitation. And for that, you need the energy of the solar plexus. However, at the same time, you also need the energy of the heart, the chakra above, to be able to say, hey, you know what? Don't be so hard on yourself. Love yourself as well. Right? So you need to learn to balance both those. So quickly to just end. Uh, so the etheric center is the one that helps you become conscious, physically conscious. So through the astral, remember we were talking about that bridge comes into the physical brain and then you realize, oops, you know what I said actually affected that person. Or you realize when, when a friend walks in, something is wrong. Something has affected them. Yeah. All right. I'll hand it over. To okay. You. I have you. Thank Sorry. You. Um, okay. I didn't, I thought she, you skipped the part for it also passes the brain. Anyway. It also passes onto the brain and permeates it. Uh, okay, so when you speak about the pass of the brain and permeates, is very important because the heart is connected to, is the manager for the upper chakras, and uh, when you you can do an experiment, you can scan the brain, the energy of the brain, and you can just clean energize the heart. The brain, the energy level of the brain will go higher. Okay, I normally practice this in healing sessions and stuff like that. Okay, you can do it on guinea pig like your kids or whoever. You clean it, energize. The brain becomes big. Uh, it also passes in the brain and permeates through directing itself principally to the 12 particle fly in the middle of the seventh and the high center. Now, there is a very powerful or very important channel from your heart uh, to the crown, to the core of the crown, okay? Uh, and it's connected. Um, the heart is actually, you know, just like the higher soul extends a portion of itself downward as the incarnated soul, the crown extends a portion of itself downward as the heart that's what master Chua thought once uh, so when you rotate this this rotates if you rotate this this rotates all right uh maybe that's how they have the but anyway <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, but maybe you have that's also like that for the heart <laughs> and the crown <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in Hollywood dancing. All right. Okay, anyway, so, uh, so you know, it, it also rotates. It's very important. This is why you have to activate the heart first before activating the crown. And also, it's the terminating point of divine energy. So, the divine energy comes into your crown and it stops at the heart 
because that's where it ends. And then the you have the clearing house and then the lower chakras. We can't go into detail of that. Don't even ask. Um, okay, uh, the corresponding astral again, corresponding. Huh? Remember, uh, when awaken endows a man with I love these words endows a man with the power to comprehend and, <laughs> and sympathize women. and women. the man and women to <laughs> comprehend and sympathize with and so instinctively understand the feelings of other astral entities. Wow. Other astral entities is feeling of other people. What he's talking about is being sensitive. Okay. Sensitivity. You know, that's why you touch your, uh, your heart when you scan. You want to feel something. You want to feel astral energy, etheric energy. You touch your heart. It will allow you to sense better. And it's the heart. that's why uh, the heart is a center for sensitivity. That's why when you uh, practice twin heart, dhyan, all these part, it, sensitivity always has to do with the heart. Always has to do with the heart. Um, that's why when a woman says, and, and this happens, what did he say? To comprehend, instinctively understand. That's why when you're, when you're in love, it, it's the heart that's so activated. You instinctively know uh, this is higher sensitivity. The navel is lower sensitivity. You instinctively know what exactly your loved one wants. You know, like you're trying to court a woman or a man. You know that, okay, oh, I think they like this. I'll buy this for them. Oh, I, I, oh, let me open the door. They will like that. So they know instinctively what to do until they get married. No, not for us. <laughs> uh, then the heart becomes smaller and it instinctively goes away. Not, not for us, of course. Not our heart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Hello, there I, might be many people who have known our happy <laughs> spouses. Please concentrate on that. Sorry, I will. Uh, where the etheric center therefore makes a man aware in his physical consciousness of joys and sorrows in others, uh, sometimes causes him to reproduce himself by sympathy, their physical aches and pain. That is to show compassion. So the heart is a sense of sensitivity, joy, compassion, blah, 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 whatever Master said. This is what they're saying. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Um, now the heart, uh, the, 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 I want to show you the presentation because I it's important. I will have to close. Can you do it? Because I want to finish. Oh, no. Sorry. Don't leave, huh? Because this is important. <laughs> okay. By the way, the heart is also the... Okay, I'll talk about it. Um, yes, someone said knowing the child's needs. Yes, you know the child's needs, but not necessarily the husband or the wife's needs. Sometimes I think the uh, with couples, the concentration of Okay, love... okay, let me finish first. Oh, sorry. Um, so the etheric double. <laughs> okay, now it says the heart chakra has a lot of, uh, has 12 petals, it's the same. Uh, and the front heart has gold and a little bit of red. You need the red. Without the red, the heart is uh, not, you need, the, you need red for proper functioning of the circulatory system. The front heart located in the center controls the heart thymus and the back heart contains uh, gold, red, orange, and yellow. Uh, orange is required because it's charged the lungs probably. So to expel, ex expel the carbon dioxide. And red also to strengthen the physical heart yeah. the muscle. All right, now here it talks about what I spoke about. This is the heart chakra. It's the uh, terminating point. That's why when you do the twin hearts, that's the terminating point. Okay, this is one level of truth. Huh? That is the, this is the reason why the hearts are getting more and more gold. So but as you continue doing your twin hearts, your light body shallow will get upgraded slowly 18 carats, 18 carats, then 20, 20, higher the better. And then 20. Uh, okay, so is it, uh, anyway, whatever is better. Okay, the heart is a replica of the crown. When you look at the heart, it looks like the inner chakra of the crown, which has 12 golden petals. It's actually, uh, it's actually one, yeah? It's a step-down version. Okay, that's why it's a replica. Now, the heart is the lower correspondence. This is exactly what, it, again, the word correspondence is used. That means what you do to one will affect the other. Keep that in mind, yeah? When Master Chua says the word correspondence, he's already explained to you the law of correspondence in basic pranic healing. Okay, now I couldn't do this in, um, I couldn't do this uh, animated because it's a lot of time. I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, um, we look at the, just don't look at the whole thing, yeah? <laughs> okay, very quickly. We look at the physical, emotional, and then spiritual functions of the heart, okay? Number one, of course, we've already said this, just to reiterate so that you guys will, uh, you know, put in more organized fashion. There are very important meridians from the basic to the heart, solar to the heart, and the spleen to the heart, okay? Uh, then you have along with, okay, along with the basic chakra, it controls blood vessels, 
all right all the blood vessels in your body is controlled by the basic chakra and the heart chakra just to tell you about the heart i put more for the physical etheric because that's what we're doing we're doing etheric so i put less but just the important parts for the emotional and spiritual otherwise we'd keep going on and on uh, along with the ajna it helps control uh, and energize the upper chakra especially the brain all right and it's a major source of air prana okay with the lungs it helps preserve life it's the preserving aspect the heart why because it fights infection helps preserve the body by fighting infection it controls the lungs and which helps bring in uh, prana and oxygen into your body and sustains the body keeps it alive but oxygen doesn't give life to the body it just keeps it alive and number 3 it's in charge of the circulatory system also which is important to keep the body alive think about it okay physical permanent seat is located in the heart chakra and as well as the physical heart okay all right so this has to do with your entire body so all the calculations are there so very important i want to go into detail but we don't have time for this that's why one of the recommendation for people who have cancer because in the physical permanent seat is your blueprint so if you have cancer that's also there in your blueprint sometimes actually it has to be there uh and what you do is when you do twin hearts regularly the divine energy comes if you've done pranic healing uh into the heart and crown heart and crown it passes through the seat to go into the earth and as it keeps doing that doing that doing that divine energy has a consciousness of its own combined with the law of mercy and the law of forgiveness you might have a change in program okay anyway we won't uh, and of course uh, in chinese tradition is connected to the element of fire uh, uh, and the hall of jade so uh, the healing by sound the tao six healing sounds uh, it's connected to the it's not only the sound each sound is connected to an element um and the sound is ho like santa claus ho ho ho, ho. anyway maybe that's why he said yeah <laughs> okay now what are the emotional functions and uh, of the heart is the emotional alchemical center this is amazing it is it, it can convert grosser energy and transmute it uh, grosser emotional energy and transmute it into refined energy it's your emotional alchemical center for the body you have to see you know any people who stop you activate their heart they become much more relaxed okay you you see in certain movies you have this tough guy you know the tough boss uh, he's very tough and then he falls in love and then what happens you know it's all right it's okay everything becomes better at the end of the movie so happy because everyone's in love so the, the heart is really the uh, emotional uh, uh, alchemical center somebody shouts at you but you love them it's okay it's okay they're fine so anyway <laughs> is the emotional alchemical center it can convert uh, anger into love and all this now how it does that we won't go into details uh now it can be enhanced by utilizing excess energy from the sex chakra so the sex chakra is desire so the desire to uh have sex or the desire to procreate or or, or the desire to go after women is transmuted and converted into the desire to help people the desire to do service the desire to sympathize desire to uh, be there for people okay Uh, and also helps uh, change the functionality of the heart it, it makes it more intuitive also with reference to the spouse it changes yeah. from not just the sex chakra but into a loving relationship oh okay that's all right, right. so it now it, it the emotional part it can make our patients much more receptive so if you have people who are very nervous uh, upset uh, or, or something like that you have to start with the heart when you activate the heart it makes a person relax to a certain extent and that translate into increased receptivity so all the other chakras you work on the auto body will automatically absorb the energy now it can be developed through direct or indirect experience this is what i was talking about here what is direct experience you go through pain <laughs> you go through pain and suffering and then you sympathize with people yeah i know even i went through it yes i know what you're feeling okay so that is direct and that upgrades the heart makes the muscles strong Uh, not the heart muscle but the emotional muscles okay uh, and what is indirect you know one time a long long time ago a master had this uh, um uh i heard that he had this in the senior retreat so me you were there i think he he said okay let's do something called a heart activation tour i'll take you there so master ko i remember was saying ah this is going to be a new technique heart activation tour so they did one of this <laughs> Sri Ram I know you can go to Sri Ram if you want I'm just going to continue this this is not <laughs> because if I stop here I'm not going to continue tomorrow you guys leave don't doodle on the screen please okay um so um you can go and come back if you go away yeah so 
No, it's okay. So, so where was I? So this heart activation tour, what was it? Is basically master took all the senior most instructors in the world or the senior most Ahadak yogis in the world through the slums. Yes. You remember that? Yes. That is indirect activation. So uh, did your heart get activated when you saw them? Well, I was surprised at uh, their condition. Uh, they, they, it is very similar to India for me, but it was much cleaner. And the space in which four people would stay uh, was literally, I would say, five feet by five feet. Um, but uh, the cleanliness of the of the slum was something that I was very the ghetto that I was very very impressed, and uh, the livelihood the there's barely anything there. And then we we went to the kitchen that we were Master Cho was uh, working with uh, that particular group, and they would actually make food there. And then all the uh, slum dwellers would come there to get their food. It, so so it was very is, touching so for that us is, to see that is the food. indirect way. So that is the I'd love to talk more about this, but really we don't have time and I want to finish this chapter. So, um, so that is the indirect way. That's why many of the, we have this uh, food for the hungry in Karnataka and different parts of India. And many of the volunteers bring their kids sometimes to serve uh, all that. And they say, oh wow, they're really touched when they see them. If you look clairvoyantly, the heart really starts to get activated and starts to become more dynamic. There is internal change uh, for some time. <laughs> all right, so that is indirect can be developed. Now, can also be developed to meditation, through chanting, to hatha yoga techniques, and books. Um, books like, for example, if you've uh, read the Guru Gita, uh, the Guru Gita, uh, I think Swami Muktananda is the one who promotes that. The Guru Gita, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the purpose of the Guru Gita is to actually activate the heart, heart chakra. And then finally, of course, the crown. Spiritual, higher mental. Number one, it's terminating point for divine energy. Okay? Um, Terminal point, and also it has a direct correlation. Also, apart from the sex chakra, to your intelligence. All right. Now, it's a prerequisite for the opening of the gateway to God or the crown chakra. I won't go into details. Brahmarantra. The Brahmarantra, whatever. Uh, prerequisite for awakening of more Kundalini energy. So, if you want to awaken, you are, all, all of us have certain amount of Kundalini energy awakened. But to awaken more, you need to have the heart bigger and bigger. You don't show compassion, you don't show love, you cannot awaken more Kundalini. Why? Number one, what you awaken, you become highly strong, activated. It will not be used for harmlessly, it will be used for harm if you don't have compassion and sensitivity. You're not sensitive to other people, you just shout at them or you just put them down without even realizing it. Okay, so you need that. Number two, if the heart is not big, the crown cannot be big. If the crown is not big, not much Kundalini energy can be activated. So. That's why one of the things you have to do is forgive, make the heart big. I wanted to talk about forgiveness and all with emotion, but I think this will be a big chapter then. Um, now, prerequisite for sexual union. Okay. Um, the sexual union uh, can be, so the heart can be developed through uh, tantric yoga, the good one, not the <laughs> not so great ones, uh, and erratic sexual alchemy. It can be highly developed very, very fast uh, through techniques. And of course, it's a prerequisite to awaken the heart because you have to, you have to, uh, before union, you have to think of, uh, you have to, you have to love your partner or you have to think of a few good things about your partner. If you don't think a few good things about your partner, you think your partner is useless, this and that, how can you unite with them, right? So that is one of the things. And it's also very good for healing. One of the things that Master Cho has written is self prank healing for hypertension can be done by just smiling at your front heart and time is done. This is amazing. And this is what you do in twin hearts. It's self, it's built in, okay? Um, and also for powerful healers, you have to place your hand. Uh, we spoke about this already. And the heart chakra through the back heart can be used to, as an entry point to, uh, for electric body to go to all parts of the body. All right. So that's why Shakti Path, all these things, sometimes are given through back heart to beginners or to junior uh, you know, disciples or most disciples. <laughs> okay, that's it. Yeah, I think. Please do this part again on Monday. I don't think so. It's, <laughs> sorry, I, I wanted to talk more. We really didn't have time. Okay, but you're welcome to go and look at the recording uh, for those who haven't been able to do that. Uh, we'll look at your questions, but uh, if you need to move to uh, Sri Ram's session, we totally understand. Please go ahead. Okay, Virendra raised a hand. Virendra, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste. Um, actually, this is not a question, but can't hear you. Uh, something, which to, something which I want to, uh, you know, uh, put forward my viewpoint at, uh, to the last session. As Amit was, uh, uh, Amit Ji was telling about uh, the spleen uh, chakra. Um, like, it 
draws energy, then it sends to the upper chakras, then the lower chakra from the basic, then again it goes yeah. to the you know, upper chakras. Now, uh, what I think, it can be wrong, but just, I'm putting my point forward. Yes. It is absorbing and giving to the higher chakras as well as to the one which the basic chakra is, uh, you know, absorbing. The quality is different. So some of the quality might be needed for the basic chakra from the spleen. So it spleen and the, the chakra is rotating. So when it is rotating, it is going to, uh, you know, uh, transfer that, or we can say uh, uh, that, uh, uh, I don't know the exact word, but then it spreads like to all the directions. So it goes to the upper chakras also, to the side chakras and the lower chakras. Mm -hmm. so the lower chakra, the basic chakra also absorbs that energy, might be for vitalizing, you know, because purple something, uh, I think it is required by uh, all chakras. And then that basic chakra, it uses that energy for proper functioning probably. And the energy which the basic chakra is, um, you know, sending upwards, that the kundalini energy, what we uh, say, is again then transmuted and goes up. What you say? Uh, that's a very complicated. Is this through direct experience or it just... Uh... Uh, what is the word? Speculating. <laughs> Not speculating, but you know, generalizing through uh, all the situations because the prana is different. See, the quality of prana of the spleen and the basic is different. Uh, quality of the basic and spleen is different. The quality of prana and the basic and spleen is different. Uh, okay, look, uh, the, what I was referring to is. In, in the book, you have to understand the prana doesn't stop. Uh, there is a flow of energy continuously in the body. If it stops, the body becomes really weak. If it stops for too long. So the root that you're talking about, actually from the basic to the perineum, to the navel and to the spleen, that root is the root the ground prana takes. You have to understand the ground prana is not covered in that chapter. So huh. according to the advanced planning book, that is the route the ground prana takes. Now with regards to Kundalini energy, you cannot awaken Kundalini energy with air prana or ground prana or emotional energy. You need, uh, you need a divine energy to awaken Kundalini energy. Uh, it is extremely uh, difficult to awaken it. Um, you can actually awaken it through uh, Hatha Yoga technique and force and principle of correspondence, but it is not very, uh, it's a little bit dangerous at this point in time. Uh, without a competent teacher and it's slower. Uh, so it could be, it could be that it's coming to the basic. We, we don't know it, but there is, there is two types of energy. But when I talk about it, I'm talking about predominantly. I'm talking about most of the time, most of the time. Uh, so uh, because most of the time, the energy is continuously being absorbed from the basic and sent up the spine, and uh, it's sent up the, to the spleen from the from the perineum and from the navel. That is most of the time. Now, sometimes from the spleen, it comes back. Yes, because the spleen and the basic both are in charge of the blood. Okay, so there is interaction of energy. But the question is, what's the point of talking about it? So if you want, you can, it's good to talk about it. But yeah, but there is, there is a connection. You are right. But we are talking about predominantly, predominantly, most of the time, most of the time. But I do not think that the, uh, the, the basic requires too much air prana. Uh, my understanding is it requires tremendous amount of ground prana and other prana. Um, yeah. And it changes as people evolve, what it requires. <laughs> okay. All right. So. so we just go to your questions very quickly and then wind up for today. Uh, thank you, Virendra, for your question. Yes. Uh, so Deepa's question, why is it common that when people are in love, uh, they... Okay. Go ahead. Okay. They gain body weight. Uh, not because of eating more or uh, obvious reasons, but energetically any reason. I don't know. I don't remember putting on any. Too weight. many dates. Come on, yeah, my God, such a bad joke. It's not <laughs> so, that bad. It's not a joke. It's true. What in the Middle East you have dates? Yeah, I mean, uh, those, okay, not sorry. those dates. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. I, I didn't personally feel uh, that I put on weight. Not enough love. Not enough love. But I think a lot of people who've been starved of love um, prior to a, a, a loving relationship with, uh, with a boyfriend, girlfriend or spouse, uh, maybe then tend to nourish themselves. And maybe that nourishment uh, is then manifesting as physical nourishment and they look like they put on weight. It's actually not really putting on weight, but uh, at that point in their life, they found someone who's able to accept them for who they are, love them for who they are, and uh, enjoy their presence in their life. So that makes a change in, in the person. But personally, never put on weight because of, uh, of my relationship. <laughs> so but, I have no you know, idea. I, I don't understand how you can gain weight without eating though. That's uh, not possible. You're talking about energy weight gain? I, I don't think so. Whether it'll change your thymus or your Correct. Uh, something like that. Mm. But, uh, not thymus, but uh, thyroid <clears throat> or whatever. But what happens is when you have the heart big, sometimes you have elation uh, and you have, you know, you float on the cloud. All right. Uh, and what happens is uh, to ground, to ground yourself, the navel might be required to pull you down to earth, so you tend to eat more. You might notice this if you go to arhatic retreats or you meditate, uh, you tend to eat a little bit more than usual because the navel, the body needs to ground or root itself. So the navel is telling you minimum time. Okay. However, um, Deepa, I've, I found the opposite. I've known people when, when we get a psychotherapy done on them, when we pull out cords, um, when there's a lot of healing being done, they actually lose weight. It's almost like the negative emotions that they've had in their life, they've kept it inside their body. And when you heal it, the person has lost weight. Yeah, we have to do research. Otherwise, it's just speculation. Right? Yeah, so this is a, at least three, four people that I know. And it's usually in the trunk area. Yeah, so that I know, this I'm... People I gain weight when they fight. People gain weight when they love. And people uh, gain weight whenever they... When some people, if they fight, they have a whole tub of ice cream or whatever, or they need sweets. So that is contradictory. But we have to... Interesting. Sea of energy, yes, the key high. Most uh, protocols mention energy in the spleen through the navel. How does that connection work? Not the belt meridian. It works. The, there's a connection from the basic to the perineum to the navel to the spleen. This one big meridian. It's a, one of the most important ones in your body, by the way. Um, okay, great insight. Wow, thank you. Okay, let's go down. How the navel controls basic? Uh, very interesting question. <laughs> it controls the manager. We'll, we'll talk about we don't have time. Correct. It's also there. Uh, um... What's the name of the person? Venkatesh. <laughs> Kayal Vizi. Vari, Vari. Vari. Okay, fine. Uh, Kayal Vari, I, it's got to do with what Master Choa says. If the navel is not strong enough, it, the basic cannot really function. So as Amit said, it's the manager of the basic chakra. And so until and unless both the navel and the basic are not strong enough, it's difficult for the person to get the things done. Yeah? So the action center to make the basic work is navel. Okay, teens have fantastic instinct then. Yeah, they do. But the instincts are more the basic instincts. As in lower instinct, lower instincts. Allergic <laughs> transmit. So front and back heat, uh, heart should be cleansed and energized before treating throat. Depending on what ailment, but I would do that. I would do that. So one of the things Ekta that Master had mentioned, there was a special session for us uh, calling Enhancing Your Healing. And we thought we were going to get amazing uh, insights into how to do healing better. And one of the things he made us uh, do was to first, the first chakra to work with was the back heart chakra. Cleanse and energize it before you work with any of the other chakras. So hopefully that gives you... Yeah. There's something that we asked. So. Oh, okay. So uh, that would probably be one of the things. How come I can't see us? Anyway. Yeah, what do you, what do you, does astral entity just mean people? I wrote it here. I don't think I typed it. Astral entity. Key, key uh, so the heart in the spiritual part is the key center to attract prosperity entities and uh, pros prosperity energy and prosperity beings also. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so from uh, true... From my heart, I feel I have no love for myself or others from someone else doesn't need uh, that number one. Uh, because of my increase in pride, so that this is from my heart, I'm not able to smile in any situation. Can twin heart? Yes, the solar plexus is quite big, Rahul. 
but more your throat. So maybe you just think about stuff. So people who are more mental, uh, they find it difficult to be. It's not that your heart is not activated. It's in relation to the solar and it's in relation to your mental body. Uh, so yes, twin hearts would help and relaxing will help. <laughs> okay. uh, taking a break uh, and also kind of pampering yourself sometimes really helps because if you feel you're not good enough or you, for anybody, yes, uh, for, at different points in our life, we need to start doing things for ourselves and appreciate the little things that we do good for ourselves or another person. So that's one way of starting to love because the program that you're talking about where you don't love yourself may not be something, may not, yeah, I, I could be wrong, uh, may not be something that you actually decided for yourself, but maybe with things that you heard as you were growing up, uh, maybe in your uh, home, maybe with your friend circle, family circle, school circle. And so when it get getting reinforced over and over and over again, you just decided to have that program for yourself that uh, you're not good or uh, you're not a good person or whatever it is that you start to keep, you, that you keep kind of repeating like a broken record in your head. That's something that we all need to change. Yeah, not just you. I think many of us have some interesting programs we need to change. All of Jade is green color. Any explanation? Yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no for the explanation. Yes to the answer. Always remember that uh, this is called the uh, num one level of truth is the Hall of Jade is Jade is very, very precious in Chinese culture. So that meridian point is extremely precious and vital to the body. Second level of truth. Always remember the principle of multiple coexistence in the same place. Within the same space uh, coexists multiple reality. The principle of coexistence or multiple realities in the same space. Like you have your TV, you have one space. In that space coexists multiple realities. You have uh, Star Wars, you have HBO, you have Netflix, you have Amazon Prime, you have NDTV. Within that one space coexists multiple realities. And think about that. All right, so we'll end the session. I think there's some question here. What? Is that it's better to clean the upper chakra than clean the lower ones? Otherwise, it depending on the ailment. Not always, not always, but usually the heart. Usually the heart, but not always the heart. Also, it depends. Like I said, for a very old patient, I would still start with the maybe the navel and then the heart. We'll we'll see. This is not a healing session, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it depends. Uh, like for cancer, master would specifically say start with the upper chakra, so it has greater control over the lower. So when you scan your patient, as you start to do more and more healing, sometimes intuitively you'll be you'll be led to do a particular chakra first, just to help them, and then you continue with the natural sequence as per master's protocol. Yeah, let's end. Okay, let's end. It's already like way Yes, over. thank you, it's everybody. Sorry, uh, we were supposed Sorry. to end. I want to end. Otherwise, again, I have to do the heart chakra and, you know, <laughs> forget it over the weekend. All right, close your eyes, connect unto your palate. Thank you, Master. Thank you to all the great ones. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokoksi. To Lord Maha Guruji Mele. To Buddha Kwanin, Buddha Sakyamuni, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light and power, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your knowledge, for your understanding, for your wisdom, for your presence and for your tremendous patience. Thank you for helping us have greater clarity and understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to assimilate it to become better divine instruments. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atma Namaste. Thank I'm you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the session. Oh, what happened? One sec. Um, we'll see you again on Monday. We'll start with chapter eight. Yeah, we're going quack now. Yes, yes, yes. Chapter eight. All the chapters um, on one page. Yes, we'll see you at uh, 6.31. <laughs> Invariably, I'm there only at 31. So I'll see you at 6.31. Uh, take care. If you have the book, uh, please bring the book. Uh, if you have the online book, please carry that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, be blessed. Be safe. Have a nice day. See ya. See you everyone.